Okay, so we're at a point in our journey through Jonah where I thought it would make sense to summarize the different forms that the Hebrew participle can have. Now here we're talking about the base stem of the participle. We'll talk about stems a little bit later. You might call it the G stem for the ground stem, or you might call it the call. Traditionally, they called it the call, Q-A-L stem. You don't need to know any of that. But this is the base stem participle form. The key to the Hebrew participle in this stem is this cholem after the first letter. Um, now, there are some, in Hebrew, there are some vowels that go long, they go short, they go long, they go short, you know, pick a length and go with it. Um, but then there are other vowels that are historically long, and this cholem is one of them. It can be written with a vav or without a vav. In the verse we just had in, in Jonah 1, it had a vav there. Uh, it can be written without the vav, um, defectively, as it were. doesn't matter. But the key is that the participle will have a holum after the first letter. Now, in the, the base masculine singular participle, as we saw in Jonah 1, I think it was verse 13. It could have been verse 12, but I think it was verse 13. This O, uh, we transliterate this as a long E, O, long E, long O, long E pattern um, is typical of the third masculine singular. Um, I know it's, we, we transliterate it as a long E, it's pronounced A, Go figure. We just memorize these things, you know, and go on with it. But whole lake, uh, whole lake would be a typical third masculine singular participle, going with some man or male masculine thing in the singular. Now, these other endings are pretty easy to remember. Like hirik yod mem, that's a masculine plural ending. You already know. We've seen it on nouns. We've seen it on adjectives. This holem vav tav uh, as a... Um, a feminine plural ending, again, we've seen that, all right? So we know that. So um, the, there's the holum after the first letter. There's the uh, a reduced vowel, that's a vocal schwa, holakim, or holakot, easy peasy, right? Because I already know those endings. Now, this ending is a little different. By the way, this can be holaka with a kamatz hey. That's an alternative form. And you know the kamatz hey is a feminine singular form. But this is more 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 common. And this is with two segols. It's called a segolet form. Um, and with a segolet uh, form, the uh, second to last syllable is accented. So it's holeket. Uh, holeket. Go tell it on the mountain. Holeket on the... Anyway. Anyway, if that helps you, it doesn't help you, but I like it. Um, so, segol, segol with a top. Now, hays and tavs as the final letter, that is a telltale sign of a feminine singular. Um, you're going to see that a lot. So, I thought this was easy and a good time to summarize because you pretty much already know this stuff. It's within reach, and all we needed to do is to systematize it. So, holake, that long O, long E pattern, holake, is typical of the third masculine and the singular participle. And what is a participle? It's a it's an ing word. That's the place to start. So we would translate this as walking in reference to a masculine and singular word. Um, holakim, we know here at Yod Mem, masculine plural, in relation to a group of masculine plural things. Um, holeket would be a, a woman walking or a feminine singular something walking. And then holakot would be a group of feminine things um, walking. And there you have it. I, I can't stretch it out much more. That's the facts, ma'am. Uh, this has been the Hebrew participle in the base stem.